Hello students. In this video, we are going to start the metabolism of nucleotides. So in unit 4, you are having uh, the next topic that is nucleic acid metabolism and genetic information transfer. In unit 1, we have seen the introduction to nucleic acid, what are nucleic acid, what are their uh, types and what are their structural components. In this unit, we will study how these nucleic acids are synthesized in the body that is biosynthesis of nucleic acids. So in this we are going to see mainly for purine and pyrimidine nucleotides. After that we will see catabolism of purine nucleotides and what are the associated diseases. There are two types hyperuricemia and gout disease. After reverse we will see um, organization of mammalian genome then structures of DNA and RNA their function DNA replication in that we will be specific to semi conservative model transcription or it is also called as RNA synthesis and in the end we will see what is genetic code what is protein synthesis means what is translation process and what are the inhibitors of protein synthesis so in this video we will see first of all what is purine biosynthesis the major learning objectives will be how nucleotides are synthesis, synthesized in the cells followed by now there are two pathways which are associated with nucleotide biosynthesis. The first one is de novo synthesis and second one is salvage pathway. De novo synthesis of purine in that we will see synthesis of IMP that is inosine monophosphate. So it is used for synthesis of adenine and guanine which are the purine bases and IMP act as a precursor during their synthesis. Then we will see in short how adenine and guanine are synthesized from IMP. Then there will be de novo synthesis of pyridines. So there is separately for uracil, cytosine, deoxy, nucleotides and lastly synthesis of thymine. And in, in the end we will see solvage pathways for purines and pyrimidines. So going to the introductory part first. So purine and pyrimidine are two classes of nucleotides. Right? Primary function of nucleotides, what is it? To act as a building block of DNA and RNA. Purines, these are of two types, that is adenine and guanine, while pyrimidines are of three types, that is thymine, cytosine and uracil. So in a nucleotide, there you are, the nucleotide structure, it is constituted of three parts, that is, first one is the sugar moiety, second one is the nitrogenous base and the third one is the phosphate group. So the ribose, uh, the sugar, that is the ribose sugar, which is there in the nucleotide that we get from HMP shunt, that is in the carbohydrate metabolism. While phosphate group is there, then the uh, it means phosphorylation has to be carried out, and the third part that is the nitrogenous base. So the nitrogenous bases are of two types, purines and the second one pyrimidines. So we will be going to see the synthesis of these two nitrogenous bases and how those are incorporated to form the nucleotide structure. Then they apart from their role of genetic information storage, nucleotides also serve different functions in the cells. And what are their main functions? They are the energy carrier. 
and ATP and GTP you all are well aware of then they are also components of coenzymes such as NAD and FAD then they act as single transduction or second messengers for example CAMP and CGMP so this is the basic of nucleotide and its structure now why these nucleotides are required to be synthesized by the body because for various cellular processes there is ample requirement of nucleotides that's why it is very essential for all the humans that the nucleotide biosynthesis should be proper now we will see the pathways i have tried to make it very easy for you so now there are two pathways the de novo synthesis and salvage pathway de novo synthesis means biochemical pathway where nucleotide will be synthesized new it will end from simple precursor molecules that's why it is called as de novo synthesis means synthesis of a new nucleotide from simple precursor biomolecules while salvage pathway it means it is used to recover bases and nucleotides which are formed during the degradation of rna and dna so here there is no synthesis of a new nucleotide the one which is already there and which is formed during dna and rna degradation will be recovered so that is called as salvage pathway so i think i am very much clear now de novo means new synthesis and salvage pathway means recovery of the already produced like we have seen de novo synthesis of fatty acids so where we synthesize new fatty acid here we are going to see synthesis of new nucleotide and from where we are going to prepare the nucleotide by using some simple precursors which will be there in the body and in salvage pathway we will be using and in salvage pathway we will be uh, using the already available nucleotides in the body for example those which are there in dna rna and when those dna rna are degraded there will be release of nucleosides and those nucleosides will be used to prepare nucleotides okay so now here is our purine ribonucleotides that we are going to see so this is the structure of purine uh, excuse me in purine structure you can see that there is a six membered ring which is fused with a five membered ring when it comes to the structure there is n1 nitrogen n3 n7 and n9 positions are nitrogen the rest are the carbon atoms and the numbering of this purine is in the anti clockwise direction it is n1 c2 n3 c4 c5 c6 and for the side ring then we will start with this n7 c8 n9 so in this way uh, the purines are numbered in anti clockwise direction now in the formation of this purine ring various compounds contribute okay so how this purine ring is constituted so for this jo uh, the n1 nitrogen okay it is given by the amino group of aspartate 
So the aspartate amino acid will give amino group to form this N1 nitrogen. Then comes the C2 carbon and C8 carbon. So these two carbons are provided by formate. Formate of N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate. They give the this C2 and C8 carbon. Then comes N3 and N9. So these two nitrogen atoms, these are give, given by or incorporated by glutamine. And in glutamine, the amido group, amido, um, amido group or amide group that incorporates the N3 and N9 nitrogen atoms. Then coming to C4, where is C4, C5 and N7. These three atoms, C4, C5 and N7, these three atoms are provided by glycine. Now the one which is left is C6. So C6 comes from directly from the carbon dioxide. So all these compounds, aspartate, formate, tetrahydrofolate, glutamine, glycine and carbon dioxide. So all these compounds contribute to form the urine ring of nucleotides. So when we understand this purine bases, so these are not synthesized as such in the body, but they are formed as ribonucleotides. And the purines are built upon the pre-existing ribose 5 phosphate. Okay, so they will be built up on the structure of the ribose 5 phosphate. Ribose, it is a pentose sugar which is obtained from HMP shunt in carbohydrate metabolism. And the major site for this biosynthesis is liver. In liver, these nucleosides, nucleotides are synthesized. Uh, the purine nucleotide synthesis takes place in majorly in liver. While erythrocytes, then leukocyte, mainly the polymorphonuclear leukocytes and brain, they cannot produce purine. So they are dependent on liver for the supply of purines. Now, uh, the purine synthesis, it includes mainly 10 steps, as I told, um, and, uh, as I told you in the previous slide. So, it requires these different compounds, that is glycine, sorry, glycine, glutamine, aspartate, carbon dioxide or bicarbonate ions, and formyl group from tetrahydrofolate. And this is the product which is formed in purine synthesis that is inosine monophosphate. And the base is hypoxanthine. So here you can see the structure of inosine monophosphate. So it is the purine part which is attached at the inosine, uh, sorry, which is attached to the pentose sugar at N9 position, this N9 position, it is attached with the pentose sugar moiety and it is uh, forming the complete mo molecule of uh, nucleotide that is inosine monophosphate. Okay. So now comes the uh, important part or you can say the most typical part which we have to study in biochemistry or which we need to remember, right? So here comes the synthesis of uh, inositol 
mono inosine monophosphate so it is a 11 step process the synthetic pathway involves 11 steps and we will see all these steps one by one so in the first step that is step one you can see here on the top that is alpha d ribose 5 phosphate the short form is written r5up so in step one it uses 1 atp and it leads to formation of 5 phospho ribosyl alpha pyrophosphate in the presence of an enzyme which is a very important enzyme in urine biosynthesis and that is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate so by using this phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate short form PRPP PRPP there is formation of the second substrate in purine biosynthesis in step 2 glutamine comes in action and it transfers amide nitrogen to PRPP to replace pyrophosphate and produce 5 phospho ribosylamine there the enzyme which catalyzes this step is PRPP glutamyl amido transferase and it is controlled by a feedback inhibition of nucleotides for example feedback inhibition of IMP, AMP and GM and this reaction it is the committed step of purine synthesis now we will move towards step 3 in step 3 phosphoribosylamine reacts with glycine in the presence of an enzyme and uh, the short form is written here GAR synthase enzyme so here the important enzyme is synthase enzyme and its full form is glycinamide ribotide synthase and this step in, uh, includes or it requires presence of an ATP then we will move to step 4 in step 4 glycinamide ribotide in the presence of transformylase enzyme what it does uh, there is a donation of n10 formyl tetrahydrofolate and this donated group is uh, or it donates the formyl group and the product is formed that is formyl glycinamide ribotide then in step 5 glutamine comes in action and glutamine in the presence of an ATP transfers the amido amino group to produce formyl glycinamidine ribosyl 5 phosphate then in step number 7 the 5 in step 7 there is uh, incorporation of CO2 carbon dioxide or there will be a carboxylation step to give amino imidazole carboxylate ribosyl 5 phosphate now this is the only reaction or you can say it is one of the reaction where during carboxylation there is no requirement of biotin like we have seen in the previous biosynthesis biotin is required for carboxylation but in this step no biotin or ATP is required then we will move to step 8 in step 8 aspartate condenses with the product which is produced in step 7 and it leads to formation of a amino imidazole 4 succinyl carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate 
then comes step 9 where adenosuccinate lies cleaves of fumarate and only the amino group of aspartate is retained to yield amino imidazole 4 carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate in step 10 n10 formyl tetrahydrofolate comes in action it donates the carbon atom to produce forma amino imidazole 4 carboxamide ribosyl 5 phosphate and uh, in this reaction all the carbon and nitrogen atoms of purine are now contributed by all the sources by all the amino acids as well as tetrahydrofolate and by carbon dioxide then comes the last step that is step 11 now what will be there there will be ring closure so the final reaction is catalyzed by a cyclohydrolase enzyme it leads to ring closure and there is elimination of a water molecule and the product obtained here is inosine monophosphate this parent purine nucleotide from which other purine nucleotides can be synthesized so it will act as a precursor IMP for synthesis of other nucleotides so I uh, in this slide it is a little smaller because I had to put all the steps in one frame uh, I will send uh, I will share a separate uh, word file so that there you can have a good view of this uh, pathway that is purine biosynthesis so it is a 11 step pathway and here how you are going to now keep in mind the uh, enzymes because those are very typical to understand and uh, second thing uh, what will be the product form so I will suggest you to see that in all these 11 steps at which steps what are the major changes occurring so if you can see at step 1 at step 3 step 5 then step 6 this one then uh, there is step 8 okay so all these steps they are mostly utilizing ATP and the enzyme which is catalyzing these steps are synthase enzyme okay step 3 it is synthase then step 5 it is synthase then here it is step 8 it is a synthase enzyme then in step number 2 and step number 5 glutamine is incorporated glutamine is active to incorporate the nitrogen atom in step 3 glycine in step 4 and step 10 tetrahydrofolate has incorporated the formyl group and there is incorporation or transfer of group so there is transformamylase enzyme is there then step 7 there is incorporation of carbon dioxide or carboxylation is there in step number 8 there is incorporation of there is addition of uh, nitrogen by the aspartate then uh, step 11 where there is release of water molecule okay so and in step 9 there is a release of a fumarate fumarate will enter into the which cycle i think you are well aware now where fumarate is used it acts as a precursor in citric acid cycle so in this way you also you can summarize the uh, this IMP synthesis or purine biosynthesis so in this way you can keep in mind which enzyme is where synthase in which steps those are acting 
ए टी पी कहाँ पे है ओके इन दिस वे वॉट आर द प्रोडक्ट्स फॉर्म एंड इन विच स्टेप्स सो इन दिस वे वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड और वी कैन ईजीली कीप इन माइंड द यूरिन बायोसिंथिस डिफरेंट स्टेप्स एज इट इज क्वाइट टिपिकल द वन विच यू हैव सीन इन द प्रीवियस वन हियर दिस राइबोज विल एक्ट एज अ बेस नॉट सॉरी बेस आई मीन इट विल बी एक्ट एज अ on on this uh, on the ribose structure uh, the it will act as a molecule on which the purine structure will be synthesized okay so it will act as a uh, you can say as a building block okay so on this the structure of purine will be constructed so i think i am very much clear with all the steps now so for you i have narrated all the steps one by one in the next ppt you can go through them the steps one by one then there is the next 11 steps all the enzymes and the new product which will be formed those are mentioned here okay so kindly go through it properly keep your questions ready if you have any doubts note down those and uh, uh, then we will move towards the next pathway in the next lecture okay thank you very much